You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, it was on February 27th. Donald Trump said that, oh, we pretty much got 15 cases. We're going to have this thing down to zero. Mm. What has happened? First of all, stock market lost another 2,000 points today, the fourth largest drop in history. What does that mean? It's lost more than 6,000 points in two weeks. The Federal Reserve announced they're going to pump $1.5 trillion into the markets in order to stabilize them. Also, all across the country, things are shutting down left and right. Late last night after we got off the air, the NBA announced that they are going to be canceling the rest of this season. Shocking players, owners, and everyone else involved. NCAA announced yesterday that they were going to actually continue with March Madness with no fans. 24 hours later, they announced there will be no March Madness at all. They are actually suspending all spring, winter, and spring NCAA championships. Not only that, Disneyland, for the fourth time in its history, will be closing on Friday. State of emergency declared by, by Mayor Bill de Blasio in New York City. We're also seeing the exact same thing happen in the state of Wisconsin. We're seeing it happen in other cities all across this country. Uh, it has been an absolute stunning 24 hours as we have seen this nation trying to figure out what is going on with the coronavirus. Here's also part of the problem that we have. Testing. So far, only 11 thousand tests have been administered across the country. South Korea, they're testing 10,000 people a day. That's how absolutely crazy uh, this whole thing is. Folks are trying to get up to date about what's uh, going on, how this thing is going to follow. I also told you, again, NBA canceled their season. National Hockey League also canceled their season. State basketball championships are being canceled as well. Broadway will go dark until April 13th. This thing is real. And it is actually stunning. Here's Donald Trump last night, supposedly trying to calm the nation in the Oval Office address, and all it did is add more confusion to what is taking place in America. My fellow Americans, tonight I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak that started in China and is now spreading throughout the world. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. We have been in frequent contact with our allies, and we are marshalling the full power of the federal government and the private sector to protect the American people. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. I am confident that by counting and continuing to take these tough measures, we will significantly reduce the threat to our citizens, and we will ultimately and expeditiously defeat this virus. From the beginning of time, nations and people have faced unforeseen challenges, including large-scale and very dangerous health threats. This is the way it always was and always will be. It only matters how you respond, and we are responding with great speed and professionalism. Our team is the best anywhere in the world. At the very start of the outbreak, we instituted sweeping travel restrictions on China and put in place the first federally mandated quarantine in over 50 years. We declared a public health emergency and issued the highest level of travel warning on other countries as the virus spread its horrible infection. And Taking early, intense action, we have seen dramatically fewer cases of the virus in the United States than are now present in Europe. The European Union failed to take the same precautions and restrict travel from China and other hotspots. As a result, a large number of new clusters in the United States were seeded by travelers from Europe. After consulting with our top government health professionals, I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. 
These restrictions will be adjusted subject to conditions on the ground. There will be exemptions for Americans who have undergone appropriate screenings, and these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things as we get approval. Anything coming right, folks, from... uh, here's what happened there. First of all, they had to walk back three things immediately after Trump gave his speech. H how in the hell do you do that when it's a written speech? You check your facts first. Then, of course, uh, Mike Pence goes on television today and says, oh, no, 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 we're not restricting, tra we're not restricting travel to all Europeans. But he also said cargo as well, but then came back and said, well, no, it, actually, I don't mean cargo. I'm, this is... Okay, if y'all want to actually see how somebody gives a speech to address uh, a pandemic, this today was former Vice President Joe Biden. Why? And the threat it poses to our health, to our loved ones, to our families, to our livelihoods. You know, I, I know people are worried. They're, my thoughts are with those who are directly fighting this virus. Those infected, families that have suffered a loss, first responders and healthcare providers are putting themselves on the line as I speak for others. I'd like to thank uh, those who are already making sacrifices to protect us whether that's self-quarantine, self-quarantine themselves, or canceling events and closing campuses. Because whether or not you're affected or know someone who is infected or have been in contact with an infected person, this is going to require a national, a national response. Not just from our elected leaders or our public health officials, but from all of us. We must, all of us, follow the guidelines of the health officials and take appropriate protections to protect ourselves and, and critically, to protect others, especially those who are most at risk for this disease. It's going to mean making some radical changes in our personal behaviors. More frequent and more thorough hand washing, staying home from work if you're ill, but also altering the deeply ingrained habits in our country like handshakes and hugs, avoiding large public gatherings, that's why earlier this week, on the recommendation of officials, my campaign canceled election night rallies that we planned to hold in Cleveland, Ohio. We're also reimagining the format for large crowd events we had planned in Chicago and Miami in the coming days. And we'll continue to assess and adjust how we conduct our campaign as we move forward and find new ways to share our message with the public while putting health and safety of the American people first, above everything else. Yesterday, we announced a public health advisory committee of experts who will continue to counsel my campaign and me, help guide our decisions on the steps to minimize further risk. But we also, we will lead by science. The World Health Organization now has officially, officially declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Downplaying it, being overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. Let me be crystal clear. The coronavirus does not have a political affiliation. It will infect Republicans, independents, and Democrats alike, and will not discriminate based on national origin, race, gender, or zip code. It will touch people in positions of power, as well as most vulnerable in our society. And it will not stop. Banning all travel from Europe or any other part of the world may slow it, but as we've seen, it will not stop it. And travel restrictions based on favoritism and politics rather than risk, will be counterproductive. This disease could impact every nation and any person on the planet. We need a plan about how we're going to aggressively manage here at home. You know, you all do know, the American people have the capacity to meet this moment. We're going to face this with the same spirit of, that has guided us in through previous crises. And we'll come together as a nation We'll look out for one another and do our part as citizens. We have, we have to be, we have to harness 
the ingenuity of our scientists and the resourcefulness of our people. And we have to help the world, help the world to drive coordinated global strategy. Not shut ourselves off from the world. Protecting the health and safety of the American people is the most important job of any president. And unfortunately, this virus laid bare the severe shortcomings of the current administration. Again, that was Joe Biden uh, speaking earlier today, uh, very critical of Donald Trump's administration and how they have handled uh, this pandemic. A little bit later, Senator Bernie Sanders, he spoke. Thanks very much, everybody, for being here. Uh, in the last few days, we have seen the crisis of the coronavirus continue to grow exponentially uh, here in the United States and around the world. Uh, and we have witnessed a global economic meltdown uh, which will impact millions of workers in our own country. Uh, in terms of potential deaths and in terms of the economic impact on our economy, the crisis we pay, face from the coronavirus is on a scale of a major war and we must act accordingly. Nobody knows what the number of fatalities may end up being or the number of people who may get ill and we all hope that that number will be as low as possible. But we also have to face the truth and that is that the number of casualties may actually be even higher than what the armed forces experienced in World War II. In other words, we have a major, major crisis, and we must act accordingly. Therefore, it is a absolute moral imperative that our response as a government, as a society, as a business community, and as individual citizens meet the enormity of this crisis. As people stay or work from home and are directed to quarantine, it will be easy for us to feel like we are all alone. I'm working at home, not in my office. Or that we must only worry about ourselves and think that everybody else should fend for themselves. But in my view, that would be a tragic and dangerous mistake. If there ever was a time in the modern history of our country when we are all in this together, this is that moment. Now is the time for solidarity. Now is the time to come together with love and compassion for all, including the most vulnerable people in our society who will face this pandemic from a health perspective or face it from an economic perspective. On Capitol Hill today, Congressional Black Caucus members and others uh, also spoke on the issue, including California Senator Kamala Harris. Senator Gillibrand, for your longstanding leadership in the United States Senate on the issue of paid family leave and so many other issues that affect our families. Um, here's the bottom line. Paid sick leave will save lives. Mm -hmm. Paid sick leave will keep communities safer. It's just that basic. It has always been an issue of workers' rights. It has always been an issue of what is the, the right public policy approach to supporting workers, understanding that every human being at one time or another will get sick and why should they have to suffer um, knowing that they either will be able to stay at home and tend to their illness or put food on the table and feed their babies or pay the rent. But with the coronavirus, it has become even more stark as an issue, which is literally there are people in America, in fact, two-thirds of low-income workers do not have paid sick leave. And when presented with the issue of whether they will stay at home while they're sick or feed their babies or keep a roof over their head, it is logical to believe that they will go to work so that they can keep taking care of their family. 
So in the midst of this public health crisis, let us understand that one of the most significant and effective ways that we're going to slow down this virus is to make sure that when people are sick, they stay at home, that they self-quarantine. So let's, uh, let's unpack the math on that. If you're sick and we don't want it to spread through the community, we want people to stay at home. If you are a low-income worker who does not have paid sick leave, if you're facing the choice of whether to feed your children or go to work, you're going to choose to feed your children. And that means going to work and perhaps spreading the virus. So what the House is proposing is not only right in terms of what we need as public policy in the United States, in terms of how we treat our workers, but this is a very smart way to address what is currently a very significant public health crisis in the United States of America. So again, I applaud um, Senator Gillibrand. I'd also just raise one more point. I serve on the uh, Senate Homeland Security um, Committee, which is an oversight committee. And of course, part of our oversight is, um, includes over OPM. Um, there are 2.7 million federal workers. And we have been asking the administration what they are going to do to ensure that those federal workers are receiving the kinds of protections they need as they do their job of working on behalf of the American people, often interacting every day with the American public. We have yet to hear a clear plan. Among the people who work for the Department of Homeland Security, again, we, over, we have oversight over that in the, in the Committee on, on Homeland Security, TSA agents. We already have a couple of TSA agents out of San Jose, California, who have tested positive. And we have asked then Ken Cuccinelli and the administration, what is your plan to make sure that the TSA workers who... All right, well, that was Senator Kamala Harris there. Uh, what is quite interesting is that um, uh, Senator Mitch McConnell made clear they were not going to take up the House bill they're moving forward on. He also said they were going to go to a recess next week, but he got blown up even by his fellow Republicans, uh, and now they're not going to be on a recess next week. They're going to actually be in D.C. doing the damn work you should be doing. So let's break this thing down. Joining me right now, my pal, Dr. Greg Carr. He's chairman of the Department of Afro-American Studies, Howard University. Uh, also joining me is Mustafa Santiago Ali, former senior advisor for environmental justice at the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as joining us via Skype is Erica Savage-Wilson. She is host of Savage Politics Podcast. Uh, Mustafa, I want to start with you. When you look at, again, how all of this is being handled, when you look at the fact that Congress was stunned today to find out that only 10,000 tests nationwide have been conducted. When you hear Trump, Pence, and others talk about uh, how this thing has not spread across America, first of all, we don't know that because you have not seen uh, the wide testing. When you have private labs, you only have a handful of labs across the country who can even conduct the testing. I was watching a clip uh, of, a, of a doctor on MSNBC, one of their uh, medical experts, who said she recommended to one of her clients to go get tested. She couldn't even get her to get tested. South Korea, only 50, only 50 million uh, people in that country. Uh, they with a, with a chart yesterday showing um, 3,700 per 3,700 people per per million mm -hmm. who have been tested. Five per one million in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now they in South Korea. They are testing 10,000 people a day. Mm -hmm. Australia, they've set up drive-through testing zones, all of those different things that they're doing, and for some reason, these folks, it, there was this, this response is just utterly nonsensical. It's lack of leadership. Um, you know, the president and his team had the opportunity for months to actually get the infrastructure in place in case this became a pandemic. If you look at across our country, and they played a role in this, you know, we have medically underserved areas. We have physician deserts. So when we talk about the testing, we also have to talk about all of these communities, communities of color, lower income communities that are already struggling in this space to actually have the basic infrastructure in place for folks to move in and be able to get the testing in place. Then we have to talk about the medical biases that, that have been traditionally in place as well. Um, and address those questions um, as we move forward. But with all that being said, it all goes back to the president and his team uh, and the lack of understanding of making sure that we actually have the right types of things that are in place. Ray, this is leadership. And it, it is, you either have leadership or you don't. What we're seeing from, from the administration, horrible leadership. 
Oh, no, absolutely. You know, well, horrible leadership from the president, for sure, mm -hmm. um, vice president. That's clear. I mean, anyone should be embarrassed watching that, what he, what he stumbled through last night. And, of course, now the stock market has officially entered a bear market. It's 20% below the high that it was at, so mm -hmm. we have that. Uh, but, you know, if I was a high school teacher or a college teacher around the country, especially since he's going to be online for the foreseeable future, this is a perfect example of a civics lesson on what of the country we live in. We talk about our country, but it's really state, local, and federal governments. Mm -hmm. So you see people taking the initiative, mayors, governors like Larry Hogan now, you know, state of emergency in Maryland. Uh, as, you, as you said, the mayor of New York City closed down New York City. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating to me is that as we've been talking offline, off air, we're in an unprecedented moment. I mean, here we are where, I just took the metro now, rush hour from Howard. Howard Hospital is going to be a place, as you say, Brother Mustafa, you know this better than, than we do, where the most vulnerable people are going to come. Mm -hmm. And they're already coming into Howard Hospital. I walked past Howard Hospital, got on the train, the train looked like a weekend, brother. It's rush hour on a Thursday afternoon, and I'm looking like we have no precedent for this. So the mayor of this city, state of emergency, schools closed. The president of the United States is exposing the fact that we live in a federated state, and people are stepping up and showing leadership based on experience. And finally, and you made this point off air, and I'm sure you're going to talk about it a little bit more, you know, Joe Biden's people, he inserted himself, and what we're seeing emerge is a clear contrast in this thing. And I hope you talk some more about the contrast even between the clips we saw. This man is completely overmatched in terms of Donald Trump. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Eric, it's, it's real clear. Uh, I got a phone call at 5 a.m. this morning uh, announcing that uh, my niece's uh, school will be closed but today uh, through March 20th. Uh, universities all across the country doing the exact same thing. Dorms are shutting down. Uh, there are people who are on college campuses or in cities that are dominated by universities saying it's like a ghost town. Where people don't understand that has a direct impact on where you eat, on groceries, things along those lines. Uh, because if people are clearing out, uh, then you don't have those services. And what you're what you're dealing with right now is a crisis of confidence from people in this in this administration. Uh, they told us last week at the <coughs> end of the week we would have one million tests available. That's a lie. They had to cut. They, they had they had to actually say the day before the, that Friday deadline. Oh, we're, we're actually not going to have it. And a month was wasted. Literally, a month was wasted because you had a you had Donald Trump who refused to even acknowledge the, the truth behind this. He stood in front of the cameras and said, "We got about 15 cases. We're going to soon be down to zero." He was telling people on Twitter, "Hey, great time to buy stocks." Mm -hmm. at, at one point on January 10th, he was even touting, "Oh, how the stock market le going gone up 11,000 in three years," and he was quoting Stuart Varney uh, on Fox Business and how we've never seen this before. The Dow may hit 29,000, never in history. And then Trump literally in say, "Things are, g are going to get better." And it has right. gotten worse. We've seen them only get exponentially worse. And the other thing I want to mention around this is that in terms of this regime, right, and I agree with my brothers, Dr. Ali and Dr. Carr, that what we are really literally seeing is incompetence in leadership from this regime, but also a lack of strategic planning, right? Remember, at the beginning of all of them coming into office, it was supposed to be this new type of leadership that was being ushered in, this new level of accountability, right, drain the swamp. And so um, then also issuing all of these different attacks around media and then also gutting people who should be serving right in um, these different seats to help us manage and uh, get through a moment the way that we have um, the one like the one that we have right now and then now there's no one left there's only the liar in chief left and then i want to just kind of peel back as we've been talking about how we've seen states really act as um presidents of their uh, own state in terms of guidance and helping people really kind of move through this global pandemic crisis that we have is that not only do we have kids that are leaving school both in um, elementary middle high and then on to college but then when we think about that in terms of their families and the type of work that they have think about those families who their job really does depend on them actually being present that they don't have the benefit of being able to work from home. So now you have um, poor and low wealth people that are really kind of caught between, well, what is it that I can do to make ends meet, right? And then you have kids at home too that now mm -hmm. they are, you know, even more anxious and more stressed out because they're at home. That's another mouth to feed. 
So we're seeing this happening in schools and also for kids that are in college because some of the kids that are at these Ivy League schools where, um, you know, tuition is 80000 a year, that now that those schools are closing, they're going to an online model. If those are first-gen col- um, college students, where are those college stu- right. students right. going? It's all They're already food insecure. So this just really highlights what happens when um, in an election, someone chooses to shake up and then 60 million people get behind a person saying that they're going to shake up the system for a person that is shown over and over again, both in their business practices um, and any other medium that they've been in, that they don't have any type of real leadership qualities. This is what we end up with. It's, out, it's now really every state, every community for itself to really protect the citizens. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, so a lot of y'all are always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know. Robert don't have one on. Nope. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down. the. It took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they make these about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear. So we don't have many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. And what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that. But if I wanted to also, unlike other, because if I flip it and turn it over, it actually gives me a different type of texture. And so therefore it gives me a different look. So there you go. So uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these Shibori pocket squares, we have them in 47 different colors. All you got to do is go to rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All right, so first of all, that graphic is way too small. So uh, tomorrow we're going to run it right down here all across the screen. So it's rollingthismartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this. Now, for those of you who are members of our Bring the Funk fan club, there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, And so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all see me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who's a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, it goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Brenda Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.